Hello, my name is Nick Budge and I work for the Department for Education as the Mental Health Regional Implementation Lead for the South East. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about improving children and young people's mental health and well-being in schools and colleges. Let me start by setting the scene. 13% of children and young people between the ages of 5 and 19 experience or meet the criteria of a mental health disorder. We know that 11 to 16 year olds are three times more likely than two to four year olds to experience a mental health problem. So we know the challenges that children and young people have with their mental health and well-being, but what does good mental health look like? The World Health Organization defines it as a state of well-being in which a person is able to cope with the normal stresses of their daily life, overcome these and achieve their goals through developing their character and resilience. Some recent research from the Department for Education shows that social, emotional and behavioural and school well-being actually promotes higher achievement in academics. Public Health England research also suggests that children and young people who can manage their time effectively, set goals, problem solve and manage their stress achieve better academically. In addition, evidence from Ofsted points out the importance of senior leadership team driving forward whole school approaches, with a focus being on strengths and positive mental health as opposed to poor mental health. There is also no contradiction between learning and well-being. Evidence from the National Centre for Research also backs up the fact that interventions for children and young people, those prior to adulthood, break the established link between social disadvantage and poorer life chances. Socio-emotional development in young people has also been directly linked with greater achievement at GCSE. DfE guidance, Secretary of State, the Relationship, Sex and Health Education curriculum and Ofsted are all focused on ensuring that children and young people develop character, resilience, mental health and well-being, not just in a traditional classroom setting, but throughout their entire time in education. Over the last few years, there has been an increasing awareness of mental health. Ofsted in particular have focused on this in their new 2019 framework. They have changed the judgments from a group of behaviour, personal development, to simply identifying personal development. This is significant because in 2015, the framework did not mention mental health at all. So that in 2019, it not only mentions mental health and physical health, but it references resilience, character, confidence and independence. So where do we go from here? The NHS budget for children and young people's mental health services will be growing by £2.3 billion year on year up to 23-24. That means that 345,000 children and young people by 23-24 will be able to receive further mental health support, including the mental health support teams that will be covering 20 to 25% of the country by 23-24. The government's green paper, published in December 2017, identifies three major priorities. Number one, for each school and college to identify and train a senior mental health lead. Number two, to roll out the mental health support teams to 20 to 25 percent of the country. And number three, to trial a four-week wait time for children and young people's mental health services. In addition, the Green Paper sets out steps to support universities in working with 16 to 25 year olds with mental health issues through the promotion and development of a 
Mental Health University Charter. As I'm sure you're all well aware, teacher well-being is an incredibly important topic. The Department for Education is developing a teacher well-being charter that will look at measuring teacher well-being annually and embedding the findings in policy development and initial teacher training. In particular, children and young people's mental health has been significantly impacted by COVID-19. That's why the Department for Education has provided £7 million funds to Bernardo's to develop the See, Hear, Respond campaign, which looks at providing support for newly vulnerable children and young people because of the pandemic. This support includes online counselling, consultancy and resources for children and young people professionals and parents and carers. So how does this all fit together? We've talked about whole school approaches and Public Health England's whole school approach consists of eight principles to building a whole school and college approach to mental health and well-being. At the core of this is leadership and management visible senior leadership driving forward and promoting mental health and well-being in the school or college. Curriculum, teaching and learning to promote resilience and support social and emotional learning. Enabling student voice to influence decisions. Staff development to support their own well-being and that of students. Identifying need and monitoring impact of interventions. Working with parents and carers in the community. Targeted support and appropriate referrals and ethos and environment that promotes respect and values diversity. These are the key eight principles to an effective whole school approach. So how do you develop a whole school approach? The first step is to take an audit of the provision within your setting. This is a very straightforward process and the National Children's Bureau, Mentally Healthy Schools and the Anna Freud Centre have all published some very useful, straightforward models and resources to support you in this step. But I want to encourage you and say that through this role, I have had the privilege of visiting many schools and colleges and have seen how you already have really strong, effective and well-being models in place and that you are already impacting children and young people's mental health, perhaps more than you know. This is not like you are starting from scratch. You just need to add on to what you're already providing and that this model will become incredibly effective even more so than it was previously. Thank you for listening and for all your efforts and work in continuing to support children and young people's mental health and emotional well-being.